Now, uh, I would like to uh, start with an introduction. Uh, there are a few settlements, actually only four settlements from the beginning of the seventh millennium BC on the Western Anatolian coast, Eastern uh, Asian and Crete. And the archeological record from these pioneer settlements shows that the farming villages appeared suddenly. These settlements are characterized by the evidence of cereal crops, a uh, four-tiered herding system, uh, emergence of pressure technique at West Anatolia and Urlu, not in Knossos, Knossos is different, uh, and production and use of land plaster. And there are no pottery shirts in these pioneer settlements. The sudden appearance of villages with the first domestic animals and plants in the region at the beginning of 7th millennium BC become the main focus of immigration theories. In order to understand the process of neolithization in the Asia, it is essential to know before the 7th millennium BC. On the other hand, we have very little information about the 8th and 9th millennium BC in the region. Excavations and surveys in the Asian islands provide important evidence of hunter-gatherer societies before the 7th millennium BC. Of course, the site of Morulas at Kitnos, Kitnos Island is one of the important sites. It has more than 30 stone circular buildings and intramural subfloor burials. Much of the subsistence economy was centered on fishing and gathering of shells and sea nails. Young pigs are pre present at the site and they were managed or in a transitional stage of domestication. The most recent surveys at the Asian coastal region of Anatolia, especially in the Karaburun and Bozburun peninsulas, points to the presence of nine and eight millennium BC sites. Girmelar is important <clears throat> because it has so far been the only known excavated 9 and 8 millennium BC settlement in the Western Anatolian coastal region, where we can best understand transition to the Neolithic way of life. Girmelar is located at the small limestone cliff of Eshan Valley, Southwest Anatolia, about five kilometers northwest of the ancient city of Tulos. The site of Girmelar consists of two long cave galleries. There is a natural hot spring nearby the site. A seven meter high mount once stood in front of the caves, but was bulldozed away from the construction of car park in the 1980s. Actually, the real name is Gebelar. Gebelar meaning pregnant woman. Women without children used to come here to bath in water, hot water. K1, about 100 meter long. It is a narrow cave. It is about 20 meter wide entrance. K2, is larger than K1, 150 50 meter in length, uh, 10, 20 meter wide, and almost five meter in height. It has two entrances opposite one another. <clears throat> Rescue excavations were conducted in three areas to document what remained of the extraction and to understand the overall stratigraphy of the site. The first at the base basal part that remained from the removal of top layers of the mount. The second, the, in the area close to hot spring. And the third, in the field in front of the K1. No excavations have been conducted into the caves. Uh, 
A one, one and a half and two and a half meter sanding trench was opened in front of the K1 at the base of the mount, actually it, uh, just at the edge of the mount. Another trench measuring two times four meter was dug right in front of the limestone cliff. Bedrock was rich at depth of approximately two meter in sanding trench. It has understood that approximately one and a half meters of the field belongs to the Treholocene. The carbon 14 days taken from the bottom field give the day trench 11,000 to 10,500 calibrated BC. It is understood that it was settled a little before the Younger Dryas period and occupation was made during the entire Younger Dryas period. Chipstones uh, have been studied by Nurjan Kayjan. Geometric microliths consisting of lunettes and triangles are few in numbers and constitute on, only 13% uh, uh, of the total assemblage. Bake bullets are the most common non geometric microliths, uh, constitute nearly 40% of the total assemblage. And scrapers are also common. Preholocene girmeler is more or less contemporary with that phase three at Ecuzini Cave, Antalya, and as well as of uh, Oriakos on the island of Lemnos. At Ecuzini Cave, uh, geometric microliths, mostly lunettes, triangles, trapezes are very common. Although geometric microliths are characteristic in girmeler, their number are few. In addition, Macroliths have been large proportion in Ökuzinike, but there are almost none in Girmeler. In Oriakos, like Ökuzinike, microlithic lunettes are abundant. I mean, it seems that there are some differences between Girmeler and Ökuzinike as well as Oriakos. There are some similarities, but there are also some differences between Girmeler and other sites. In the sanding trench, we found very compact floor. A compact floor indicates the existing of possibly architectural structure. And we are not sure at this moment, but if so, it will be the first architectural structure of this period in Anatolia. Clusters of hotberry seeds, a shaft straightener, bonaval, shell bits were found on this compact floor. Actually, shell bits found in large number in all layers, nearly hundreds of them. The other two times four meter trench was dug right in front of the limestone cliffs at the lower level of the destroyed mount. Part of a structure with lime plaster floor was discovered. Floor was formed by small Pebbles mixed with lime. Two post holes gudged into the floor were also noted. Uh, it seems that the floor has been renewed several times. Structure appears to have had superstructures of woodland up. This structure also has a number of features, including a circular sunken mud plaster basin and huts. I mean, we liken it to the old buildings made of woodland up found in Pınarbaşı in central Anatolia. Three AMS radiocarbon dates fall between approximately 8,200 to 7,900 calibrated BC. I mean, contemporary with prepotary neolithic sites of Aşıklı, Boncuklu, Balıklı, also Pınarbaşı. A shaft straightener, bone tools, and shell bits from this uh, Tria Gibisula, also known as Nasarius, were found on the floor. The 98 millennium BC chip stones have been studied by Denis Gilbao. Uh, 
Kipston industry at Girmeler is characterized not only by a small microlithic component and the almost absence, total absence of geometric microliths, but also manufacturing techniques that rely on the use of direct percussion and poor quality raw material. They try to produce blades when it was possible. They use these blanks directly or with a minimal retouch. Radiolarit appears to be the main raw material, no obsidian at all. There are the tools are very rare. There are some scrappers, borers, one big, and some bearings at all, only. The 9 8 millennium BC archaeobotanical remains at Girmeler have been studied by Müge Ergun. Barley, possibly wild, appears to be common plant. Own fragments are also common. They all come from the heart and its surroundings. Gloom bases of gloom weeds are also present. They come from the mud plaster basin and floor of the structure but all are in fragmented condition, needs further, further taxonomic examination. But a gloom base could be identify, identified as a tetraploid type. It seems possible that gloom weeds also appears to be a real component of the substance strategy. The 9 and 8 millennium BC animal bones have been studied by Levant Atija. The identified taxa consists of wild animals. Fallow deer, roe deer, wild boar, wild goat are dominant. It is clear that remains of large game are predominant in the assemblage as a general pattern. And according to Atıcı, Girmeler assemblage represents a generalized hunter-gatherer strategy with increased duration of occupation and increased multi-seasonal site used in an ecotonal zone with a diverse resource base. Burials were found at the entrances of both caves, on the edges of the walls. And right radiocarbon dates indicated that they belong to the 8th millennium BC, as you see. <laughs> These burials are the earliest date found in Western Anatolian coastal region. And preliminary result of ancient DNA studies carried out by the NeoGene project showed that they belongs, belong to the same population as the preparatory Neolithic Central Anatolians. The second excavated area is about 100 meters north of the caves and the mount, of course, a small rocky hill near the hot spring. I mean, the hot water comes out from the crack, deep crack into, into the into rock behind. I mean, this area heavily has been heavily damaged by bulldozer. Two buildings with terrazzo floor of the rocky hill were excavated. We consider these to be special buildings, special purpose buildings. The first building it is a trapezoidal structure, which is heavily damaged. The terrazzo floor of the structure made of burnt lime with small stones, various thicknesses from three to four centimeter. Building was divided into a red painted slightly raised floor on the east and decorated lower floor on the west. On the eastern part, the terrazzo floor has been painted in red. This part contains a large burial pit. It contained these remains of preliminary, a preliminary young adult female buried in a flex position. Near her head was the articulated remains of an adult male, which was only represented by his skull and long bones. 
It seems that the bones of the previous burial carefully set aside to make space and the new burial was placed in the pit. The field of the burial contained only a broken grinding stone. Post holes with different sizes on the floor of the building have suggested the roof supported on tim timber posts. A cranium of a young adult was also found in a post hole on the red painted floor. The buildings under the red painted platforms and the human skulls placed on the post holes are very similar application, of course, to Neolithic Chatelric. On the western part of the building, the terrace floor has been decorated with red painted linear motifs. This part of the building is badly damaged. Although V-shaped and semicircular motifs are observed, they are rather faint and worn. Actually, when we first, when we first saw this shape, we thought it was a vulture motif on Chateauvieux wall paintings, but of course we were wrong. But it is unique for Anatolian archaeology anyway. The second terrazzo building, building is probably square plant, but half of the building was bulldozed away. Terrazzo floor is harder and thicker than previous building. The terrazzo floor has been decorated with red painted geometric motifs, probably triangles and chessboard pattern. A Polish stone eggs and cluster of blades with pressure technique were found on the floor of the building. Blades made with the pressure technique mode one. I mean the pressure in the hand. It seems evident that special purpose buildings of Girmela provide, provide new contributions to the symbolic and ritual behaviors of the Anatolian Neolithic. But absolute dating is problematic because I mean, collagen was not found on the bone sample because of the buildings was very, very close to the surface and perhaps, perhaps close to the natural hot water source, we don't know. Since no enough burnt organic matter could be found, the burnt dub fragments were used to for dating, but no good results. We are still trying to date these buildings. On the other hand, a terrazzo floor with geometric pattern was recently found at Ekshoyuk, Denizli, dated 6,800 calibrated BC. And we know that pressure technique did, did not exist in the region before the beginning of 7th millennium BC. And pottery first appeared in the region again at the beginning of 7th millennium BC, but no pottery shirts were found, at least in this area in Girmela. Buildings should be dated either the beginning of 7th millennium BC or the end of the 8th millennium BC. I mean, we are still trying to date these buildings. The third excavated area is the field in front of K1. This part has been heavily damaged by bulldozer. First, a section was created by Ralph Bex in the profile that emer emerged in the destruction. Afterwards, we made small excavation in the profile. About 10 superimposed structure with lime floor have been observed. The structure seems to have been deliberately destroyed in each time. There is a burn field on every line floor, then it seems like a building has been rebuilt. Some line floors are four feet centimeter thick. It can be mentioned that there are special purpose buildings or one building or two buildings side by side, we don't know, but they are constantly renewed. Hajjalar type of red on white painted shirts 
come from the upper part of the profile. Petrographic analysis show that all painted pottery are imported. According to Refik Duru, similar potteries have been found in Hujek mixed accumulation layer and Bademacı upper accumulation layer, approximately 6,000 to 5,700 calibrated BC. Along with the painted shirts, according to petrographic analysis, shirts are determined to be local, they are also found. Post shirts, which we think are early, were found, were found in the lower, lowest field of the profile. They are mineral temperate monochrome shirts, but there is no radiocarbon date yet from this lowest field, unfortunately, and we do, we do not know how early these shirts. So, one of the important question for Girmeler is what does Girmeler contribute to the neurotization of the a a agent or let's say uh, Southwest Anatolia? Before answering this question, let's compare the 9-8 millennium BC settlement at Girmeler with the contemporary Central Anatolian pre-pottery neolithic settlements like Aşıklı and Moncuklu. There are circular oval buildings in both pre-pottery neolithic Aşıklı, Boncuklu and probably gir at Girmeler. Intramural or subfloor burials are also present. Subsistence economy was based on mainly on hunting gathering. No domesticated animals occurred. On the other hand, oikap breeds were managed in Aşıklı and Boncuklu. Some domesticated cereals exist in Central Anatolian Prepotri Neolithic site and also in Girmeler. Chipstone industry is different. Uh, chipstone industry is characterized by projectile points mainly in Central Anatolia, but it is characterized by bladelets and flake type of industry at Girmeler. Let's now compare the 9 millennium. BC settlement at Pınarbaşı. Waddell and Dub structures similar to Girmeler exist in Pınarbaşı, but there are no domesticated cereals and animal management in Pınarbaşı. But the problem is Pınarbaşı is a Neolithic site. Same as Aşıklı and Boncuklu. Now when we look at the uh, Eastern Anatolia, for instance, the Tigris Basin PPNA. The Tigris Basin PPNA groups were hunter gatherers, and no elements suggest pre domestic cultivation, and even white cereals were rare. But still, we are talking about the Neolithic. So, can we see Girmeler as a Neolithic settlement? The answer is yes. I mean, it is a pre pottery Neolithic settlement, such as. Aşıklı and Boncuklu. So another question. Was there any sedentary societies in the 9-8 millennium BC in the Asian part of Anatolia? The term sedentism is used many different ways and encompasses a range of settlement forms. The sedentism in central Anatolia and the Asian part of Anatolia refers to semi-sedentary or quasi-sedentary mobility pattern where in macro bands macro band at base camp settlements are annually inhabited by at least some members of the group, for example, the age. It seems different type of environments show sedentism developing along quite different paths. It seems that single cause explanation for sedentism and agriculture have remained elusive. For me, the important question, an uh, important problem is a uh, problem in neolithic definition in the agent. According to scholar, scholars working in the Near East and Anatolia, neolithic is marked not only by onset of farming, 
but also by the emergence of complex, complex symbolic and sociopolitical systems. Archaeological evidence in the Near East and Anatolia shows that the early sedentism began without agriculture and animal husbandry. When we look at the Western Europe now, in Western Europe, monumentality, social memory, structural transformation, cultural landscape, and symbolism are argued to be the motive forces in the Western European Neolithic. But scholars working in the Circum Asian are used to associate the term Neolithic always with plant cultivation and domesticated animals. While the perspectives on Neolithization in Near East and Western Europe are changing, is it accessible to remain constant in the Asia? And another problem, the other problem of not having many excavation project. When we look at the early 7th millennium BC site, only four sites, only four excavated sites, Uru, only 24 square meter has been excavated. At Uluca, more than 100 square meter has been excavated, but only special buildings have been excavated. Çukuriçi, only eight square meter has been excavated. Knossos, maximum 15 square meter have been excavated. When we look at the nine and eight millennium BC site, Girmeler, you see Girmeler is a small scale excavation and it, Girmeler, it's a destroyed site anyway. Large scale excavation exists in Marulas. Kiklok Cave is a cave site, so Small excavation exists in Kiklok Cave. And small scale excavation, Kerame and Damnoni in Aged Island also exist. While the Pacific, uh, as can be seen, there is not enough excavation in the area, and there is not enough data for a, for a small number of excavations it would not be right to say anything definite about how the way of life began in the region, whether it is immigration, colonization, or acculturation. It seems too complex to be reduced to a certain patterns. But as a result, according to Girmeler excavation, now we can talk about the Neolithic process before the 7th millennium BC in the Anatolian part of the Asian, contemporarily with Central Anatolian Prepotery Neolithic. Central Anatolian Prepotery Neolithic sites and Girmelar show same general trend. At least domesticated cereals exist in both areas. We need more excavation project, of course, and also needs a change in Neolithic perspective in the circum agent. Thank you for your listening. Thanks, uh, Putin. It was very nice uh, to hear the, the news from your new excavations. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask if somebody wants to ask something. Are there any questions? No questions? Oh. I can um, ask one. <laughs> First, uh, Virgin and Tanner, this is really fascinating for, for many of us, but I think especially for those of us that, you know, sort of working in that region across the water, um, it's really fascinating. And I, I agree that uh, terms of domestic, or sorry, terms of neolithization, as we begin to encounter the sort of the cultural diversity of it over a large area really has to be rethought in a, in a developmental sense. So uh, I really appreciate your talk and really enjoy it. I have one just minor question, and I, I see that the zoo archaeology is probably ongoing um, and that maybe you don't have as much detail yet. But 
is there any fishing at all in any of those communities of that area? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, in nine and eight, this uh, nine eight millennium BC settlement, also some fish ponds, and uh, the uh, the people believe that there is a small lake in front of the caves at that time. But we need further investigation. We are not sure at this moment, but. Some geologists say that there is a lake in front, just in front of this uh, caves. And there are some fish bones. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Any more comments or questions? Hello. Uh, Borsin. <laughs> Borsin. Thank you very much. Very exciting. It's a very, very exciting talk. Uh, I heard about Gil Merler, but I didn't know all these details. Thank you very much. You know, the, uh, you're absolutely right. The, the, <laughs> the answer to all your questions about uh, uh, the neolithization of the Aegean area lies, I think, in the, the lost uh, landscapes, the underwater landscapes, which uh, have been lost forever, I, I'm afraid, because of the, of the sea level rise. Uh, this might, might, might be the, uh, the answer to some of your questions about uh, uh, the neolithization process in the Aegean area, uh, which includes, of course, many coastal areas and many islands, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nikos, what, what, what do you think about Morulas? <laughs> Marulas is a, <laughs> ma, ma, uh, Marulas is a very, very interesting and very important site. Yes, of course. Very, Sorry. very important site. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, absolutely certain that, the, you know, uh, Samson has claimed that uh, he has uh, detected some uh, um, proto-domestication Processes. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. sure about that. I see. Uh, I see. I see. <laughs> uh, we have to be very careful about I that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't say that it's impossible, but uh, it, it will be a, a big, uh, you know, uh, change in our uh, narration of, of what is what is happening uh, for that uh, Western spread of, of the Neolithic way of life. Um, and also, um, Jura, the Cyclops cave, again, yeah. uh, he, he has claimed uh, the same kind of things for, for, uh, for Jura. Yeah. yeah. Know, that, that he, has, he has detected some uh, uh, proto-domestication episodes and phases. Uh, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. We have to be very careful about that because, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, as you can understand, it's... Uh, uh, it's, very, it's, it's very tricky <laughs> to, to claim that. <laughs> but you, you're absolutely right. Uh, we, we miss uh, uh, projects. We, we, we don't have uh, the number of uh, excavations we need to be able to, to narrate the whole story in, in a much, much more detail. Uh, you're absolutely right. But I, I'm, I'm afraid most of that... Uh, of those sites have been lost forever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, only, the, the only solution would be to, to do some underwater. Yeah, underwater, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, very, very, very interesting, Gilmeler. Thank you very much. Thank you. For your presentation. Uh, uh, Burcin and Tanel Uja, thank you so much for the presentation. We, we, people working in central Anatolia, have to come and see Girmeler, <laughs> it seems, since there are close uh, resemblances and things. Uh, I have a small question about the area uh, close to the hot spring. Yeah. Do you think that that area was once within the limits of the mound, or was it an offsite? Like Musular, for example. You know, Musular, the, our interpretation is that Musular is an offsite of Ashikla. It's very close, actually, to the mount. 
but uh, it's a off-site, a satellite site or so. So that uh, the area close to the hot spring has a, a plastered, lime plastered floor in a special building. Am I right? Did I? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Huh. So it, it, was it within the uh, within the mount or an off-site? Uh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, actually, there's only only one site in Eshan Valley. We have surface survey in all the valley, and we found we didn't find any uh, seven, eight, or nine millennium BC sites or material. So uh, this site is uh, is only site like. Yeah. In Ashik in Central Anatolia is a large only big site in Central Anatolia in Ashik mm. But I am not sure actually, but it, it is a cave site. Of course, the cave is important and uh, probably some ritualistic, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a ritualistic kind of site, maybe. We don't know because I mean, it is heavily destroyed. Yeah, this, this, unfortunately, I mean, everything yeah. is destroyed. Yeah, that's and right. We try, yeah, we try to, you know, the little bit, you know, to understand the site and it is stratigraphy, but I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. it is, it's very really shame to destroy it, all the absolutely, material. yeah, absolutely. Great pity, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. But we can still excavate the, this nine millennium, eight millennium BC mm. uh, site is a, in a in a large area. There yeah. are some, you know, parts mm -hmm. also left. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And uh, Mario, please, can you? Thank you very much for this fascinating talk. I have a question about the burial um, beneath the red floor. Um, can yep. you say anything about um, the chronological relationship between the building and the burial? Was it abandoned or was it used after the burial? Yeah, we, uh, actually, we try to date these buildings and we couldn't, I mean, uh, there's no radiocarbon dates in our hand. So, but there are some burials dating to 8 millennium BC, and there are some burials in the building should be either 8 millennium BC or uh, at the beginning of 7 millennium BC. Uh, we are not actually sure about the relationship with these burials and the burials in the building. Uh, so we, <laughs> we, need, we would like to date, absolute dating. We need absolute dating of these buildings, but then we have lots of problem. We, we sent four uh, samples, uh, two different uh, radiocarbon labs, and they couldn't manage the date, unfortunately. But I don't know what we are going to do, but we have to date. Because dating is important, very, very important, because it is the 8 millennium BC site, it's, uh, the dating, it should be the 8 millennium BC, it's changing everything. If, and if you date 7 millennium BC, it's a different story, it will be a different story. So it's important to dating of these buildings, but Unfortunately, we couldn't manage the date. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Nobody will ask anyone. May I have one more question? Okay. Uh, Burcin, uh, you said terrazzo in right. one of the buildings and then lime plaster in another one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It seems 
is different. They, so they, they are different. different. Ah. Yeah, they are different. And when you say lime plaster, that is just. Uh, yes, mean, just the lime. And plaster. Just the lime floor. Just the lime floor. <laughs> hmm. Terrazzo is like uh, Chayanne Terrazzo, or yeah, yeah, like mix mix with small stones and you know polish something like that. So there are two different types of uh, two different types of yeah. Okay, thank you, Ian. Please. Yeah, thank you. Um, great presentation, fascinating site. Um, Recognizing what you were saying in terms of the um, the destruction of the upper levels, I'm still very impressed with what exists down below. It sounds like there's real um, some amazing opportunities. You know, I thought when you first started and talked about the amount of material destroyed, I thought mm. it's sort of like concrete and nothing left anymore. Uh, so I was really surprised to see that there's so much left. So here's my question to you with this great presentation. What are you hoping to do next? What's the next step that you hope to, uh, to do as you hopefully are going to be able to continue working there? Yes, we are going to work inside the caves. <laughs> Not outside, but we are going to excavate inside the caves to, to look, look at. But maybe we can find some you know, Paleolithic layers. We don't know actually at this moment. But we are going to definitely excavate the inside the case also. Uh, Islam. Islam? Islam, ask something, I think. Uh, Bursin, can I can I come back to you, Nikos? Of course. How many how many lunates do we have? You said a few. Yeah, only thirteen percent. Uh, okay. Actually, seven. Seven, seven, seven oh, Bursin. Seven. seven. seven <laughs> only seven. <laughs> only seven lunates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, what is not that? I mean, there were uh, probably uh, they, they were uh, they were made uh, with a microburing technique or not? Uh, no, 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 no. No, we don't have. Because this is the, this is the kind of technique used in uh, Uriakos and Mimnos. Yeah, yeah. It's the microburing technique. So, there is no, no microvision. No, no microvision. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, is, this is different, yeah, it's different than it's different. It's other different. sites. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bush. Tuba Hocam. Hi. Bucin, you should keep. Keep going on excavate outside of the cave, I think. I mean, there are lots of theories about the neotization of Western Anatolia, but very small evidence. So we yeah. can't solve the seventh millennium sites, cannot solve the origin problem. We can we can uh, reconstruct the, how the um, how oh. the economy or how the community what uh, what was the what what what, what was it? The meaning meaning of the community uh, during the early seventh millennium BC, when agriculture was already adopted, uh, uh, but uh, before seventh millennium BC, the only sites uh, for the neolization in Western Anatolia, I mean, can solve with girmeler. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we will excavate. We we have hundred square meters right now. Okay, we will enlarge the site. But still, uh, Ulujak or another place, I mean, the seventh millennium sites cannot be a solution for the origin. Yeah, of course. But, you know, 
where is the money? <laughs> where is the team? <laughs> so money, of course, money is important. But in the future, we will see. I mean, most of the theories are building on just a few square meters. There are yeah, big no, theories, yeah. but no evidence. So yeah, that's why we need more excavations, either in yeah, the yeah, uh, mainland right, Greece right. or in Western oh. Anatolia. Yes, you are absolutely right. We should, yeah. Excuse and on me, the other hand, I'm just party, wondering party whether... Question. Hi, Özlem. Uh, maybe. Of course, Taner. Uh, maybe uh, it is better. I want to ask for your question. Uh, you know, uh, I start uh, with excavation in Girmeler. Uh, I want to hear about uh, the prehistorical time for Lycia. Not I want to uh, excavate it uh, for a, a Girmeler or Girmeler caves. Uh, uh, we have no idea about Girmeler before the excavation. Uh, maybe Girmeler was very old. Nobody has interested about Girmeler. And um, uh, uh, first years of the excavation, uh, we uh, have arrived, our goals, uh, we heard that uh, we, uh, Burchin uh, told first uh, result of the first excavation, we arrived uh, 7,000 or 8,000 BC. Uh, it is very important. Uh, uh, there is a point. We have two excavation area in Girmeler. Uh, one of is the uh, uh, Girmeler in front of the uh, uh, caves. And second is the caves. It's different uh, area. And uh, I, uh, I think uh, we have a result, uh, Burchin, you mean at uh, same now. We have the result. Uh, we have the last settlement of the uh, Girmeler settlement. Mm -hmm. 12,000 BC or 11,900. Now uh, we need another, uh, we need an answer for another uh, question uh, inside all the caves. Uh, uh, we don't have no idea uh, how is the situation before uh, uh, a Neolithic period. And we, we must, uh, the, uh, after the, uh, after 2022, uh, we must uh, concentrate it for uh, uh, inside of the case. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we are we are planning to excavate inside the caves to to see what's going on on the in, in the caves. Other side, there is a new project. Uh, the uh, uh, they want to build new uh, 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 building in front of the caves, and uh, we cannot stop the excavation. Mula BDDC want to build that. They have a new new project. Uh, uh, I spoke with the law, uh, people in Mula for Koruma Kurulu, and there's a big problem. Yeah. Any more comments? No more? Okay. Dilek Koptekin. Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, thank you so much about the, the information of Girmeler. It's so excited. Uh, I was wondering, you mentioned about like similarities between Girmeler and Central Anatolia uh, and also all the others Western Anatolian. I was wondering, do, did you find any similarity with the Marmara region, like the Barchan? Uh, is there any similarity with them? Similarities about material culture or uh, I don't understand exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is it material culture or like the building type? 
I don't know so much about the archaeology, but I was wondering. I I when we look at the I mean northwestern Anatolia, I mean it's quite different than the uh, in southwest Anatolia, southwest Turkey. I mean, there's a different material culture and different lifestyle, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but actually, there, there, is, there, uh, there is no eight and nine million UBC sites in uh, northwestern Anatolia anyway. I mean, the Girmelar is the only site, not only uh, southwestern Anatolia or Asian Anatolia, whole west. All Western Anatolia is the only site that excavated, actually. 